scripture today comes from Luke 1, 39 through 45. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Jordan town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with loud joy, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt with, for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Thank you, John. Okay, so I've been telling you to, I know you've been reading the scripture ahead, and I've been telling you to think about what quest questions that you would ask of the scripture, ask of God about the scripture. So, here's your chance. You got a question, ask away. Larry, you got a question? No, not, not right now. Okay, all right, so my first, I'll ask questions for you. My first question that you're going to ask is, what led up to this scripture? What, what happened before this? Well, you know, but I'm going to tell you anyway. The angel told Mary she was going to have a baby. And that her relative, Elizabeth, would have a baby in her, in her old age. Now, we don't know exactly how old Elizabeth was, but we know that she was way up. Was that John the Baptist? Yes, okay. very good. Lawrence asked if that was John the Baptist. Yes, Elizabeth is having John the Baptist. So when, when the angel told Mary, what would be the first thing that would come to Mary's mind? Well, maybe a lot of things. What came? Is it possible for me to have a baby? Yeah, that might, might come to her mind. But the angel said, you're going to do it, so anything else might come to her mind. Well, Elizabeth's too old. She knows. We don't know if it's what her relationship is. We think it might be like a great aunt or something. But we know, um, you know, Kinsey's 11. We think that Mary was somewhere between 11 and 14 or so in that range. So Elizabeth would be in her ninth, if she's in her 90s, that would be like a great, great aunt or something. Any other questions? Mary's engaged. What might another be another thing that come to her mind? What's Joseph, Joseph going to think? How's he going to react? Now, how old was Joseph? We have no idea. We in our in our study on Wednesday we said he was somewhere between eighteen and ninety. I mean, we have we have commentaries that say that, but the general thought is that he's in his 40s or 50s at least. So she's got to think about Joseph and how that's, he's going to react and then how her friends and neighbors are going to react. So it would have been like an emotional high and an emotional low all rolled in together. And she needed time away from prying neighbors and friends and even family because of this news and, and how she's going to present herself with this news. And the angel didn't give any help. The angel didn't go out to the town and say, everybody, hey, everybody, you know, guess what? It's just her. So it's her word about an angel. So, Mary went to see Elizabeth. Do you think Mary went by herself to see Elizabeth? We don't know. 
According to one commentary, it's 80 to 100 miles that she had to travel to get to Elizabeth. And if she's Kinsey's age, that seems like a big trip for a teenager or, or pre-teen teen even. It sounds pretty scary. But maybe it's not all that abnormal for that time. But I can see where she would want to be alone. Because she maybe didn't tell her family yet. If you read ahead, we want to know how did Elizabeth know that Mary was going to be the mother of Jesus? Because she says that in the scripture in verse 43. How did Mary, or how did Elizabeth know that? Because a baby jumps in her, yeah, well that could be kind of a clue. A baby jumps in Elizabeth's womb. An angel didn't tell Elizabeth. And what, what can Zachariah say? He can't talk. So, so he gives hand signals. That's a lot of hand signals to say your relative Mary is coming and it's going to be carrying baby Jesus. But we have to assume that the Holy Spirit in some way told Elizabeth. When did Mary tell Joseph? It's either got to be before she left or after she came back, when she was gone three months. But didn't the angel tell him? We know the angel told Joseph sometime, but, that, uh, but we assume that it's after Mary told him. Back, no, she's only three months. Pardon? I'm going to go with after she came back. And the reason I'm saying that is Mary is a strong lady of faith. We, we really appreciate Mary. But she's also a human. And all she has is the angel's word. If she goes to see Elizabeth and see that Elizabeth, that's Norma's age, is going to have a baby. <laughs> Did you hear that, Norma? You're going to have a baby. Yeah. You're, we're saying you're going to have a baby now. Norma doesn't think so. <laughs> so if, if Mary, being human, if she goes and sees Elizabeth is six months pregnant, then that reinforces for her the story and gives her the strength then to go back and face the name. Because she knows this, this, it wasn't a dream. This angel really told me this, and here is part of what he told me, and it came true. So now I can face Joseph. That's my... My thinking, it doesn't say that in the Bible where she told Joseph. But we do know that Joseph was ready to leave her. So if she, if she came back and told Joseph, and Joseph said, ah, I don't know what to do, and then the angel came to Joseph and said, that this is our baby, help us out. So I wonder if Mary was the kind of person that always you could count on to always tell the truth. I wonder if Mary was the kind of person that you could always count on to tell the truth. Now we know people that will take the truth and stretch it. And if you have someone like that, then you kind of say, every time they say something, you kind of take it with a um, grain of salt. Yeah, there you go, grain of salt. Because you know that they may have stretched a little bit. I don't think Mary was like that. I think Mary probably was a truth teller. But the truth that she had to tell would be more than people could handle.
So Mary gets this news and right away she heads out with haste. With haste. That means not messing around. She probably packed her bags and started down the road. And like I said, they're saying uh, it's a, quite a distance between 80 and 100 miles. And it's not just flat walk. You know, this is, uh, that land is hilly. And there's thieves and all kinds of stuff. A little bit scary. But God would protect her anyway. God would protect her. We know that. But she needed to be away from those who knew her and close to someone that would listen. So she's got in her mind that I'm going to say aunt, that her aunt will listen to her and understand because the angel said she's having a baby. She's going to under, the aunt's going to understand. When she entered the house of Zechariah, or where, we're continuing the sentence, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Now it could have been that part of the reason that she went to Elizabeth was to avoid the scandal that would come up in Nazareth. If that's so, then this welcome greeting by Elizabeth would be very sweet. Somebody loved her. We don't, we don't have anything on Mary's parents. We don't have a word from them. But they're part of the culture. And the culture says, if your daughter gets pregnant out of wedlock, you're out. So Mary needed someone that would love her. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Now these two babies are definitely miraculous. And you either believe that this is what had happened, or you don't. It's that simple. You either accept the miracles of the Bible, or you don't. If you consider yourself a Christian, that means you believe this is what happened. The world is getting so crazy now, they're believing all kinds of different stuff. But this is part of being a Christian right here. So, John the Baptist jumped up and down. Poor, poor Elizabeth, she's probably going, hey, settle down down there. Though John even wasn't even born yet, he had a spiritual awareness that something important had just happened. God knew, or John knew that it was a good thing. Now there are three persons in, in this chapter that are said to be filled with the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist, Elizabeth, and Zechariah, all in this, in this chapter 1. Luke 1.15 is the verse where, um, that's where the angel told Zechariah, but what the angel said was, the last line there, even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the time right here when John's jumping up and down inside Elizabeth. So back to Elizabeth. John the Baptist had not yet been born and Zacharias was still mute. Yet Elizabeth believed. In the temple, Gabriel had told Zacharias that their promised son would prepare the way for the Lord. That's the clue that we've got that the Spirit told Elizabeth that this baby in Mary was the Lord. And Elizabeth went on to say, And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord, the mother of my Lord, comes to me, for as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. So as Mary rushed out of uh, Nazareth, and rushed to go see Elizabeth. She may have been wondering if these, all these last days were real or not. Did, did this angel really come? Did this really happen? Elizabeth greeting right here, saying, 
John leaped for joy that welcomed the mother of my Lord would have strengthened her faith. Her pregnancy would have seemed impossible, but her wise old cousin believed and rejoiced in something that she was still hadn't figured out had happened yet. And apparently it was the Holy Spirit that told Elizabeth that Mary's child was the Messiah. And as Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth believed that the baby in Mary's womb was the one who Elizabeth's son would prepare the way for. And her son's not even born yet. Now little is said in the scripture about Elizabeth. But she is a remarkable person. She had faith while her husband Zechariah, who was the actual priest, did not have the faith. He's the one that was struck mute for not believing. But Elizabeth was not. She believed in what was going on. She believed God and now she encourages Mary. Of course Mary is very young and Elizabeth is very old. Elizabeth had walked with God, had stood beside her, her husband the priest as he w went off to the temple day and night and heard his stories about the temple and everything. And she assures Mary these things are going to happen. This is what it's going to be. And Mary certainly needed the encouragement. Now even though Mary or, uh, Elizabeth uh, was pregnant with a, a son that she'd been waiting a long time for, she could have envied Mary because her, she knew that her, Mary's son was going to be more special than her son. But of course she didn't. She was just filled with joy that they could be together. And blessed is the one who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. So this is Elizabeth talking about Mary. And Mary did believe. We don't want to say Mary didn't because she believed enough to go to see Elizabeth. Which I wouldn't want to make that trip by myself at that age. Maybe it would be a fun thing to do, right? But she did it on faith that what the angel told her was true. Elizabeth recognized that Mary's faith played an active role in receiving the promise. And we should receive God's promises and have an active role in our lives because of the promises. They should prompt us to act on them. And one of the promises is God's Son will take away our sins. We need to believe that and act change our lives because of it. So Ma Elizabeth did all she could to encourage Mary's faith by saying these things will happen. Even so, this blessing that was coming on Mary, we know, will be a sword that pierces her heart. For Mary, this time could be thought of as less than joyful. She would be shunned by her neighbors. The doubts of the neighbors and friends would be hard to overcome and might cause more doubts for Mary. And Joseph, by all rights, may leave her or call for her stoning. Regardless, Mary fully believed and committed herself to God. And this visit to Elizabeth now confirmed that part of the story. And perhaps by this time Mary's starting to feel the effects of the pregnancy, we don't know. But it's, it's got to be within a couple of, or maybe a week of when she got pregnant, so she may not feel that yet. Mary needed support. She needed to be able to walk beside a woman of faith 
to help her through the trying time. She, Mary had probably witnessed other girls being punished for the same thing she's about to reveal. And she knew Elizabeth was a woman of faith. She probably assumed no one else in the world is going to understand but Elizabeth. In fact, she probably knew that most other people in the world are going to attack her. So because of her time with Elizabeth, now Mary was leaping for joy for the faith and support that she received. Now we too should be leaping for joy. Everybody get up and leap. You can do it. Oh, you can't. Not today, not this morning. Why do I say that? Because we are surrounded by a faith community. We have people we can go to when we have doubts or when we have things happen in our lives that we don't understand. We have women and men of faith that we can go to to get help in our time of need. Just like Mary had Elizabeth to go to. Because we know that even though we all in here make mistakes and we struggle with life, we all know that God loves us, that Christ died for us, and we have a path to eternity through Jesus. Let us pray. God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for all the people through the ages that have believed and followed him and walked in faith. We thank you for those that surround us that have faith that we can go to and talk with. And we thank you, God, that you can use us, our meager little faith, to give joy to another. We thank you for this season of joy. In the name of Jesus, amen. Good Christian, Christian friends rejoice.